Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about this feature in Power Query and Power BI Desktop or Power Query inside Microsoft Fabric, Power Query Online, or even Power Query in Excel that gives you the ability to get data from a folder when you have multiple files in, the, in, in one folder that they have the same structure, like for example, uh, budget of uh, 2024, budget file for 2025, uh, similar structure but different data in the same folder, how you can combine them, how you can make sure that this process doesn't need any manual uh, intervention from your side, from Power BI side, and as soon as the new data comes in, you will have that updated automatically. I'm going to show you how this works. Let's go and check it out. So let's talk about the requirement first. It happens quite often that you have uh, data coming as files, CSV files, Excel files, text files, uh, and they might include data that uh, has um, a base structure, let's say the budget for 2024, the budget data for 2025, uh, in separate Excel files, in separate, um, let's say, in text files or CSV files. Uh, you can put them in a folder, and this might be a SharePoint folder, it might be a local folder. Um, Power BI has this ability, or let's say Power Query has this ability that can scan all the files in the table and can bring them together. You can filter it based on the data type of the file so that you make sure that you are only getting the file that is going to be processed and then combine them all together. The process is quite simple. It uses custom function behind the scene and I have created videos about different parts of it as well, but in this video we are going to focus on how this feature is going to work. So let me switch to my screen. So as you can see here, I have few um, CSV files. Let me also enable zooming in my laptop so that you can see. Uh, so these are all of them are CSV files. They are all in the same folder. I'll just open one of these so that you can see what this looks like. These CSV files are Fitbit activities. Fitbit is like this uh, activity tracker. This is Samsung, by the way, but Fitbit also have uh, similar uh, devices that you can track the activities. Each of these files behind the scene, each of these files include the activities for one month. Um, and uh, each of the records in these files is like one day and the color is burned, steps, things like that. So this is, for example, for August 2015, and another one uh, which I have here, for example, is for September, October. Imagine these would be the budget data or in anything that you want to process. Now, what I want to do is to um, not to get data from each of these files individually, but I want to go and get data from the whole folder. So I'll go and copy this folder path and then I'll come inside Power BI Desktop. This is a uh, feature that we can start with, get data, and when you go to more, you can of course get data from text or CSV, but what we are going to do is to get data from folder, which is under the file section. Uh, you also have the option to get data from SharePoint folder. I have a separate video about that, explaining how the SharePoint folder works. Uh, but in this one, we are talking about the folder specifically. So I'll say connect, it asks for the folder path. As soon as I enter it, uh, it is going to scan that folder for all the files in the folder. And what you see right now here is actually the list of files in that folder. The name of each file, the extension of it, the dates has been modified, created, the content of it. Uh, we can start combining it right in here or we can even like filter it before combining it, which if you want to filter it before combining it, you can go to transform data. For example, here you might have some files that are not CSV or anything like that. You want to filter them out. Uh, I'll start with combine to show you how simple the process is, but then I'll show you how we can customize it. So I'll say combine and transform data so that it brings us to the Power Query editor, whereas combine and load, combine them and directly brings it into Power BI, I need to do some data cleaning beforehand, so I'll say combine and transform data. Then we choose combine uh, when we have multiple files. Uh, one of the first steps that happens is that it asks us to choose a sample file as a template because these files might not have exactly the same structure. 
Uh, for example, one column might be missing in one of the files, uh, but there is a file that has all the columns in it, like you have a template file. This is a place that you go and choose your sample file. Um, I suggest you choose the file that has most of the columns because if you have a column but it is missing in one of the files it's okay but if you are uh, using a template file that doesn't have all the columns then uh, then another file has it then you wouldn't get that file information right for me all of the files has the same structure so I just leave it as this which is like the first file uh, it is a CSV comma separated uh, comma value separation format and it fetches it correctly so I'm not going to change anything here I'll just click on OK <coughs> this will <coughs> load uh, Power Query editor for me the Power Query editor inside Power BI desktop the same is available when you use it in Excel or when you use it inside um, Power Query editor online uh, so here is my Power Query editor window. Not sure why it is not coming up. Let's switch to Power Query editor window. Here it is. Uh, and I'll explain what actually happened here. I have one folder, uh, one let's say query here, that is combined version of everything. Here you see everything is combined. Like these are all the files combined into one you can even see when the file changes the next header of the next file the file name as well all of those uh, but behind the scene what happened uh, it has created a parameter and it has created a custom function i have a separate video talking about how the custom function works i have even explained um, an example of fetching public holidays information from a website parameterizing it and creating that custom function yourself uh, so make sure to go and check that out um, in here, what has been done is that this automatically created a parameter for your sample file. Um, you see it all here. Uh, it created a parameter for the sample file. It created a query for that sample file. And then it created the function based on that, that whenever you pass another file as a parameter, you'll get the result of that file. When you click on this query, which is associated with that function, this is the query that processes only one of the files. And, um, and this means that if you go to this function and call it for another file if i pass another file in here that would process that uh, another file then in the source file what happened is that here we have an step right here uh, the invoke custom function that you see we have a list of all files uh, what happened is that it actually called that function this last column in here is calling that function for each of these files and the result of this is the process data of each file which is then expanded uh, as you can see and then the data is all combined together so this was just to explain to you what is the process you don't really need to um, be concerned about it because it has all happened automatically you just saw that I clicked on combine and transform and all of this happened uh, all of this magic happened automatically but understanding it is important because when you know how this works then you can go and customize it in a much better way I'll, like, I'll explain what I mean by that uh, when I click on the source files here you see that I have um, I have some um, I, I need to do some transformations for example uh, the very first row of each file is not really useful or the second row of each file is what uh, we need to use as a column header rather than column one column two column three things like that and the data types for these should be also changed they are all text at the moment right so I can do those modification in here which may not be the best place to do that or I can do the modification inside the function which is here and if I want to do the modification inside the function the query related to that function would be the best place to do that so I'm going to do those modification in there and as soon as I make them you'll see the impact of this here so let's start with one of them you see that here for example we have the first row in each file which is activities it appears at the beginning of each of these I want to remove that I'll go to that query related to the function uh, and in here I would say just remove the very first row because it appears that the very first row is not the row that uh, I'm going to use so remove top rows and I say remove top one row you see it is removed from here and when I go to that source file which is combined version of that you see it is removed from all the files 
immediately, right? Because you are changing it from the function and because all the files are running that function and combining them together, that's much easier way to fix it. Another thing is that you see I have a blank row at the end as well. I don't want that too. So I'm going to click here and say remove empty. Again, I do that in the function, in the query related to the function, and that automatically fix it when they are all combined. You see, it's, it's that simple. Um, now, there are some changes that if you make them in the query related to the function, because it might change the structure of the function or the structure of the output of the function, it might break the combined version of it. For example, this is one of the changes that I'm trying to, uh, I'm about to make right now. You see, for example, the very first row here is the column headers. So if I promote that and make these column one, column two, column three to be these column headers, that is a structural change. This means that the next query, which is probably related to the combined version of these would break because it is expecting column one, column two, column three. Uh, so if we are making such a change, we just need to make sure that we go to the version that is combined version of these and fix any errors related to that because we are changing the structure. So let me show you how I do that. Here to bring the first row as a column header, I'll go to, um, I'll go to actually here to transform tab, use first row as column headers. You see this is immediately fixed. It also set the data types correctly as well. The very first column is date and then color is burned as number. Distance is a decimal value. Everything is perfectly set correctly. But now you see that here I get an error. In the source file, I get an error. And when you look at the error, it has something to do with finding uh, a column called column one, which is expected because we don't have any column one now. Um, so if I um, normally to fix these errors, you just click on the step before to see at which step everything is working fine. So even if I go one step before, everything is working fine. It is only the last step in here that caused the issue. Uh, which is the change type and because in the change type it actually uses the exact column name column one column two column three that is why it is uh, failing so i'm going to fix that i'm going to remove this step and everything is back to normal now all i need to do is just to make sure that they have the right data types all of these uh, I'll just remove this first column as well because i don't really need to cut this column this is like the file name um, so let's get this one removed and then I'll select all the columns using control A. Here we have a really useful transformation called detect data type that would detect data type for all of these at the same time. And here is all the data. I'm going to call this source files. Um, let's say all fit bit data. And that's it, right? This is combined. But um, I want to talk more about this custom function and combining files feature because one of the important thing about this is that now that we have this, this is going to be automatically updated the next time that we have new data in this, um, in this folder, right? You see at the moment we have 245 rows from I don't know how many uh, files it is. If I go to that folder, <coughs> And this is that folder. You see that we have, let's say, eight files in it. Now, let's say the next month happen or the next week or whatever it is. And I have some new files added into here, right? So I'm going to cut these from here, add it into, into this folder, right? And all we need to do is to wait for this data to refresh. Normally, when you build your Power Query application, your Power BI application, you will upload it into the website, you'll schedule it to refresh, and the next refresh will pick it up. Here, because I'm showing to you demonstrating it inside Power BI Desktop, I'm hitting the refresh manually. So you'll see that uh, this 245 rows will now change to whatever the new value is, 333 rows. Immediately, it picked it up. That is what I mean by automating this process. You don't need to go and fetch the new data and publish the Power BI file into the website anymore. You'll just schedule it and just pick up that value. Uh, for this scenario, because we use the on-premises folder, this will require a gateway setup. If you use SharePoint folder, it wouldn't need a gateway setup. I have a separate video talking about that as well, so make sure to check it out. 
One other thing that always you need to consider is that when you are getting data from a folder, it might happen that sometimes you get a file that is not in that format. Like for example, this one, this is a text file. I'm going to copy this text file and bring it into, into this folder to show you what happens, right? So this is a text file, all others are CSV file. I'm going to just refresh this so that you see what happens. And you see that as soon as um, I have a file that doesn't have the similar structure, I'm getting an error. Sometimes you get error, sometimes you don't see the error as this, but when the data loads into Power BI, you see an error. Uh, it is important to make sure that you have the similar structure across all of your data. So in this case, uh, we better to just filter out anything that is not CSV. And where you do that? Uh, in the same query that has all the combined version, we need to go and find the step that the data is passed to that custom function. And that is the step that that function is called, invoked custom function. And that is the function that processes one of the files. So before that step is where we need to filter the data. So I'll click on that step. You see in this step, we have all the files. We even have the file with the extension of txt. So I need to do that filtering before this step. I'll go one step before this. And in this step, I'll go and filter it based on the extension. And it's just this easy. I'll just say, give me .csv, right? Um, let me see. What did I miss? Um, the hidden, the field hidden after records didn't found. Okay, let's just go and check it out. Okay, I changed that to be the second file in this list because the first file did have uh, that text in it. So I don't want to use that. So that is one of the reasons that when you are combining, it's better to choose uh, a specific file rather than just the first file or the last file. Uh, so I changed that. This is the indicator of what item in that list. And I'm picking the second one in this case, probably a better choice. Uh, this um, single function file works and all the combined version also works. But one of the things that I want to mention here is that when you filter the data, you can filter based on anything. Like you, for example, you may not want all the data in that folder because you may have a lot of data in that folder. You may only want to pick uh, whatever that has come in the last 12 months. So you can actually go and say, I want to filter it based on date modified. And under the date time, um, you can say it is in the previous, for example, uh, year. Now, I'm not going to add that as a step in here, but you can filter it based on that. You can filter it based on, for example, many other attributes as well, like the name of the file, for example, might contain a specific characters, things like that. So even if you expect files with the same extension, but different structure, but they are different in their naming, you can also use that approach. So always use these to make sure that you get the right um, file. Uh, and when you have the right file, you can go and uh, choose the right transformation on one of the files, the sample template file, and then combine them together. This method showed to you is quite simple because it uses the UI to uh, process all of these. Uh, most of the work is done behind the scene. The custom function is created for you. Um, but if you want to learn how to create the custom function yourself, go and check out the video that I have about creating custom function. If you want to know how, if you have multiple sheets in the same Excel file that you want to combine, I have a separate video about that too. If you have these files coming through an email and you want to combine them together, I have a separate video about that too. And if you are trying to get data from SharePoint folder instead of a folder on-prem, I have a video about that too. So go and check those out. Uh, out. Um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Until the next video, bye. Mm -hmm.